I should have had that in there earlier. That's real important. A lot of this stuff here is from where this machine was before I bought it. I think it was at like a concrete place. I washed a lot of concrete out of this thing. Look at that, that's what that is right there. With the plates off like this, I'm going to go ahead and pressure wash underneath it and try to clean some more of that out. All right, let's get it in for uh, actual service now. All right, engine oil first. All right, I'll let that drain for a while. All right, next I wanna get the hydraulic oil to start draining. And to drain it, come to the bottom of the machine. And this drain plug right here drains it. All right, so there is a return filter here. And here's the fill plug. So I'm gonna crack the fill plug and then crack the drain plug. And I'm gonna 
have to buy a socket for this. That would have been near impossible with a adjustable. So I just went to the store and had to buy this inch and five eight socket here. Oh, yeah, that's gonna fill that up real fast. All right, I'll uh, let that finish dripping out good. The manual says to clean clean the tank, but this tank here looks clean to me, so. So here's the new part. Alright, so next we're going after the suction strainer right here. So in order to get to it, this, uh, this radiator has to be pulled out.
No, I'm gonna have to pump some heat. That's gonna be hard to get to. Okay, the next step is uh, to remove this, this strainer here and clean it out. Here's inside the tank. There is a little bit of dirt just below that beam of light there. All right, that looks pretty good. Going off the manual here, it's saying to clean this this strainer. This strainer here it looks to be just like a metal screen, and I do see a few dirt particles in it. You can see some here. This camera doesn't really pick them up that well. 
All right, that's clean. All right, I'm gonna use some uh, some grease here for these O-rings. This thing has a part number on it. So three S three D one fifty W. All right, that's where it should be for now. We'll fine tune that later. All right, so this machine, pre-fuel filter, fuel filter, oil filter. All right, here's the part number for original Kubota oil filter. Too much. Alright, that's no good. That needs to be addressed. I had thought I'd been hearing kind of a knocking noise like that. So let's see what what's going on there. That's the water pump. Alright, I forgot to turn the camera on, but I just pulled these four bolts here. Look how bad this is. Alright, so here's this new water pump. 
and gasket. All right, I don't know what these are supposed to be at, but I just put them at 25 foot-pounds. All right, so I want to put this radiator back in, and we tried beating these pins out earlier, and they were pretty stuck in there. They didn't even move at all. So I'm wondering if I can mount this thing back up enough where I can line it up enough where I can get the bolt started. And so I guess I'll try that first before trying to beat these pins out. All right, that's connected on the roof and this has that safety pin in it. So I think that's capable to lift that radiator. Alright, we're close right there. So I just got one started on the bottom and I have two on the top. So I'm gonna try to get this other one that's right here behind this fuel filter. All right, that felt like it started.
All right, cool. Well, there's a way to do that if you don't have another person. Flow tube, and they just had it routed like this. This is the point where things kind of start getting tight on this machine because this is kind of all the room I have to work. And I just really want to make sure that I got this line or this hose here all the way up on there. Because if not, there's a good chance it's going to leak. Okay, there we go. This clamp here is dirty and it does not want to work. Already got this hose connected and I'm just going to loosely connect these for now and I'm going to finish bolting up this radiator and then we'll come back and really crank these down.
radiator plug. All right, so here's the small fuel filter, and this is an APIS part number for it. So this one will go here. And this one is actually a Kubota filter. Sometimes you gotta add fuel to these filters. But, uh. I don't know. We'll just see if it starts. different shape and size on that one all right one more thing up here on these hydraulics this is a pilot filter so essentially what it does is filter the hydraulic oil that comes up here to the controllers so it's crucial to keep all that filtered and clean so this is the part number here and it's inside of this metal canister here Okay, so the engine oil level is good. Hydraulic oil level is good. They have two gallons of antifreeze in here. I'm gonna see if I can get this thing to start and add water to it as it's running. sucked up all that hydraulic fluid. I'm sure it's going to need some more engine oil too, so let's address that. Alright, that's where it should be. And I'll come back and check that again later.
All right, so it's supposed to go down further than that, but the locking mechanism is hitting the concrete back here. All right, so cool, that works. I'm gonna do the same thing for this side. Uh oh. Oh man, this one broke. This one's either gonna go or it's gonna break like the other one. Feels like it's gonna come out.
And I also had to take this panel slightly off in order to access that a little bit better. So I'm just gonna bolt this stuff back up and then I'll do the same thing on this side. If anyone's working on a Takuchi, how do you get this off? You have to pull these two Allen bolts right here. And then this is mounted on a metal bracket that slides out. And check out how this works. It's pretty cool. I've never had this apart before. But this joystick just catches these, uh, these little metal components down here. And that's what tells the bucket to move. So that's cool. Alright, found a little bit of leaky oil and I suspect it's coming from this top because there's two bolts missing here and here. Well, that was a little time consuming, but it's nice to have good bolts because when you're actually working on a problem and you have to work on rusty bolts, that's really aggravating. All right, the next thing I want to do is straighten out this plug mount, this electronic plug mount uh, for the auxiliary hydraulics.
All right, that looks better. All right, I actually have these, this, uh, this motor here oriented wrong so you can see the picture the two plugs are supposed to be in the top right quadrant and the one plug is supposed to be at the very bottom so I'm just going to move this and let it finish draining all right that's been draining a while and um, kind of off camera I've been touching up some paint while that's draining and I'll put a link in the description of this stuff. This seems to be going on well and it matches good. Um, and that that website has paint that matches all different types of equipment. So, so like I just painted this section here and then kind of some of the rusty sections here. Alright, so this machine, I think this machine calls for SAE 90, but this is what I'm using in it. That's what's available to me. Alright, and these do have a torque spec if you want to be real critical about it. It's 15.9 foot pounds. Okay, so essentially the oil level line will be right here. So you're supposed to fill in this top hole until it runs out of this hole right here. All right, now I just got to do the same thing on the other side.
premium premium body work all right all right i just got to make this mount fit this light All right, <clears throat> these plugs that these lights came with, they're pretty nice. I mean, they have a rubber seal here and, you know, they clip into one another. But here's the problem with that. I would have to cut a much larger hole right here or route the wire underneath this piece of metal. So I think the better thing to do is just to leave the factory these these plugs here. So I'm going to cut this wire here and solder it onto the new light so that I can use the existing plugs.
All right, that's cool. That looks good. All right, now I'm just gonna do this other side here. All right, you can see I've kind of been touching up paint off camera. And we're gonna finish that later, but right now I'm gonna address this front roller here. Uh, in the previous video, I replaced this side. And uh, it's time to replace this side now, so let's, uh, let's do that real quick. So this one's not as bad as the other one was. Alright, here's this new unit. 
and I'll put a link in the description for these. I got these on Amazon. So I guess here's a part number. All right, here's the problem here. That for some reason, this piece here is not clearing in between the top and the bottom. Um, I don't know if it's because it's debris in there, but this this inside is fine. That'd be cool. All right, next morning here. So the plan today is to finish painting this thing a little bit.
All right, well, this is not necessarily the maiden voyage of this machine since the service. I've been running a few hours. But uh, everything's been working fine. It certainly looks a lot better. Oh, with the paint and everything. All right, so I'm just going to end this video here. We got this little pile of dirt over here to spread out. And there's a good low spot on this vacant lot right here to put it. That went good this you know that was easy this is something that's gonna get all tore up for a new home foundation anyway so feels great to have my machine serviced and uh, ready to go for a lot more hours